The Lightning Connector is one of Apple's newest innovations, offering many new benefits like the reversible cord. But sometimes the cool new innovation stops working, and that's when we come in. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and I'll be walking you through this repair. But as always, make sure to check out our step-by-step -step guide on iFixit.com when you do your repair. For this repair, you will need one of our iPhone 4 pentalobe screwdrivers, which conveniently works for the iPhone 5, a Phillips double zero screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, a SIM ejector tool, or a paper clip if you don't have one handy, a set of plastic opening tools, a small suction cup, and a spudger. If you don't have any of these tools, I would recommend grabbing one of our ProTec toolkits. It has all the tools you'll need for this repair and many others. And while you can do this repair without it, I strongly recommend using one of our magnetic mats. It's not listed as one of the required tools for this repair, but I don't know how I'd live without it. The iPhone 5 has a ton of really small screws, and using the mat will not only keep them all in one place, but you can organize them. I like to write what step I took the piece or screw out on, but you can make whatever doodles help. Okay, so now that I have all my parts and tools together, I'm gonna get started. And as always, make sure your phone is off and completely disconnected from any power source. Check and check. Now we can remove the two pentalobe screws down by the lightning connector. Okay. With those screws out, we're going to use our small suction cup to help us lift up the front panel. You're gonna to wanna to place this right above the home button. And once you've got it on there nice and tight, gently pull up to separate the front panel of the rear case. I personally found this to be the most difficult part of the repair. There's several clips around the display holding it in place, and they really work. You may have to use more force than you would think, but you only need to open it enough to get the plastic opening tool in. Once you get the tool in there, you're gonna wanna gently pry the front panel away from the rear case. Start at the bottom and work your way up the sides. Now that the clips along the bottom and the sides of the phone are released, we can finally lift up the panel away from the rear case. But be careful, there are several cables that connect the display to the phone and we don't wanna damage those. You don't wanna lift the display more than about 90 degrees from the rear case. Next up, we need to remove the three Phillips screws holding the cable bracket in place and then using our trusty plastic opening tool, disconnect the three cables connecting the display assembly to the logic board. Now that the front panel assembly has been removed, we can work on getting the battery out. To start with, we're going to remove the battery connector bracket, which is held on by two Phillips screws. With that bracket off, we're going to gently pry the battery connector up and out of the socket. The battery is held in place by a good amount of adhesive. So to free it, you're going to use your opening tool to gently pry it out of the rear case. Take your time and be careful. You don't want to deform or puncture the battery. When prying up the battery, it's essential that you only pry from these three locations. Make sure you especially avoid the area around the pool tab as there are sensitive chips that can be easily damaged by the prying tool. Now that the battery is out, all potential power sources have been removed from the phone, so we can get to work on getting the logic board out. The first thing we need to do is disconnect a bunch of cables, remove two brackets holding the logic board in place, and pop out the SIM card.
When lifting the logic board out, make sure you lift from the bottom, here. And before you go tugging on it too hard, you need to disconnect the antenna cable that is connected to the back of the board. And just like that, the logic board is out. Now we can turn our attention to the lightning connector assembly. To do that, we just need to remove a few screws. With those screws removed, we're going to use the flat edge of our spudger to gently pry the lightning connector away from the rear case. Now that that's out, we can carefully peel the speaker assembly away from the lightning connector ribbon cable. Of course, you can find all the parts and tools you need for this and many repairs at ifixit.com and let us know how it goes. We love to hear your repair success stories. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest teardown and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.